Hi, I'm Dr. Ray Vandenberg at Discovery Lab in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Welcome to Discover at Home, a series of science lessons you can do at home with a parent or caregiver. For today's lesson, we will be exploring bubble science. First, let's make our bubble solution. The recipe we're using requires water, blue dish soap, and light corn syrup. The recipe is for six cups of water, add one cup of blue dish soap, and one quarter cup of light corn syrup. I'm going to make a larger batch using three quarts of water, and I've adjusted the other ingredients accordingly. So I'm going to add my water to this large clear container, this fish bowl. This is three quarts close to three liters. In my adjusted recipe, I need two cups of blue dish soap. We're using the brand Dawn. Two cups is almost, or just about a half of a liter. I'm gonna add that to the water and slowly stir. I don't want to create any foam. And then finally to that, I'm going to add in my adjusted recipe, a quarter cup, or rather a half cup, or about an eighth of a liter of light corn syrup. And I've found that a little more of any of these ingredients actually makes for better bubbles. And there we have our bubble solution. So there are three ingredients for our bubble solution. Water, dish soap, and corn syrup. A bubble is basically a thin, soapy water film that encapsulates gas. The soap acts as a surfactant. Basically, it makes water wetter, so it reduces the surface tension of the water. Otherwise, the, wa the, the bubbles would not be able to be formed because of the attraction between water molecules would make it collapse. So the soap is added to reduce the surface tension of the water. The corn syrup acts as an emollient it also reduces the surface tension of the water, making it still even wetter and allowing for even larger bubbles to form. Now we have our solution and we will now need a bubble wand. You can use a traditional bubble wand if you have one, but you can also use things around the house, like a slotted spoon or a funnel. You can use a paper towel roll. Basically anything that has a hole in it that you can blow through. Okay, now let's experiment with our bubble wand. Let's see which one works best. The traditional bubble wand. There we go. How about the slotted spoon? Nice. Let's try a funnel. All right, nice. Let's try the other end of the funnel. Little bubbles. How about the protractor? or the paper towel holder. I've 
I've made another bubble wand using a pipe cleaner and a straw. And I've bent the pipe cleaner into a kind of star shape. What shape do you think a star bubble wand will make? Will it make a star bubble? Let's find out. You may have noticed that regardless of the shape of our bubble wand and regardless of the shape of the hole that is producing the bubbles, the bubbles end up as spheres. When you look at your bubble, you'll see that it's iridescent. It has like rainbows in it. It's a thin film and the rainbows you see is due to an interference pattern based on the wave property of light. The air pressure surrounding the sphere presses equally on all sides. The sphere also is the minimum surface area you can get to contain a specific volume of air. So you can think of other shapes that can contain volume, like a cube, but a cube containing the same volume within will have more surface area than the sphere. The sphere is the minimum surface area that you can have to contain that volume, and hence the lowest amount of energy needed to contain that amount of air. Free bubbles will always be spheres, but if you capture a bubble within a frame, you can create interesting shapes. So I'm making some three-dimensional geometric shapes using pipe cleaners and straws. And I slide the straws onto the pipe cleaner, and then I can bend the pipe cleaner and create different shapes to make different frames to make my bubbles. So using the pipe cleaners and straws, I've made this three-dimensional cube shape. Now let's dip it into the bubble solution and see the bubble that's formed. So the bubble contained in this cube frame is not a sphere. It looks like two pyramids that are connected to a square in the middle. Regardless, this bubble corresponds to the minimum surface area that the film can take to withstand the pressure around it. Now let's see what bubble shape will form when we dip in this shape, which is called a tetrahedron, which is three equilateral triangles that make up a pyramid. So let's put that into the bubble solution. And let's see what bubbles formed. Look at that. So again, the bubble contained by the frame doesn't have to be spherical, but it does have to take a shape that has minimal surface area. Now that we've talked about how to make a bubble solution and also how to make bubbles and the properties of bubbles, I'd like to share with you a demo we do here at Discovery Lab that utilizes the bubble solution, but adds to that dry ice and a container. So dry ice is frozen solid carbon dioxide. It has a temperature of negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we have a container that is partially filled with water, and then we've drilled a hole and we've added this fitting to which we've put a rubber tube and then a fitting at the other end as well. We are going to drop the dry ice into the water. When the very cold dry ice gets to the room temperature water, it will begin to sublimate. What that means is the carbon dioxide will go from a solid to a gas without passing through a liquid phase. So you're going to see what that looks like. I'm going to drop in a piece of dry ice into the water. And so what's happening is the dry ice is moving from a solid to a gas and is creating this fog. Now the fog is actually made up of tiny, tiny ice crystals. The 
The moisture in the air is turning into ice. So this is water ice, very, very tiny, and it creates this fog. Now, if we put the lid on this container, that will force the fog out that hole through the rubber tube and out the end. Now let's see what happens if I dip this into the bubble solution. It starts creating these bubbles, but these bubbles have fog inside. Now look what happens when they hit the table and they burst. You see a little burst of fog as they fall. A bubble shower. Thanks for hanging out with us and learning about bubbles. We'll see you next time.